Breath of Life presents Relentless Pursuit with Pastor Walter L. Pearson, Jr. Join us now as Pastor Pearson continues his message about Jesus entitled House Call. Jesus could have gone anywhere to show that he knocks on doors. Uh, when you look at this particular passage, you discover that he has come to a city called Laodicea. Laodicea is not the town you want to visit. Laodicea is not the state of the church at its best. In fact, there are seven churches in Revelation. They are so close to this passage that anyone will be able to find it. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, Laodicea. And there are some of these times, because every name of a church represents a time during the history of the church, all the way from the beginning to the very end. And if Jesus wanted to go to the best place with the greatest possibilities, he would not have started knocking on doors in the city of Laodicea. And incidentally, there was in fact a city, a very real city named Laodicea. Uh, one of the things that it was known for was its eye salve. I'll come back to that. It was a place where its main product was black wool. You know I want to talk about that for a minute, but I will pass it by. When anything black pops up, I want to get in there and connect with it, but I got to move, so here I go. You just remember what I might have said. In Laodicea, they believed that there was a vast wall and a marble theater. In fact, it was probably built on seven hills like Rome was. It was a significant city but it was not known for being a great time in history. Laodiceans had one attribute that made Jesus have a hard time dealing with them. Jesus said to Laodicea, you are lukewarm. <laughs> I don't know about you, I, I grew up in a house that did not have full medical coverage. giving you a minute to catch me you know there are houses now where you don't have to worry you've got your got all kinds of coverage and if something happens you just dial a number or you rush somebody off to a, an emergency room your HMO or whoever it is will make sure that you are taken care of uh, we were under the grace plan I remember when my brother and I would get to uh, get hurt and have diseases and you would think that somebody would call the hospital but nobody had enough money to pay the bill so my mom and dad would come up with remedies sometimes I was shocked sometimes I prayed Lord help us this does not seem even to me to be an adequate remedy but if God knows you don't have it God steps in and makes up for it. <laughs> and there were a lot of times when my parents' home remedies worked. I got a couple scars that I would not ordinarily have because there was no plastic surgery after the wound. But I'm still alive and I'm still functioning because God was in that process. The fact is that when you are under this coverage with Jesus, and you have to remember, that Christ can make up for it. That I'm looking now at families who don't understand that Jesus would come in, even to Laodiceans who were lukewarm. There were times when we got sick and my mom knew how to, let me put this in a pretty way, knew how to help us expectorate the poisonous substance. Is that pretty enough? I may have to nudge somebody and tell them what I'm talking about. So she would say, drink this water. And you know, huh? No, huh? She said, That's, that water will take care of the problem. It would be lukewarm water. 
it makes you sick at the stomach. Jesus says, Layer the seal, there's something about you that I don't like. You're not cold, you're not hot. Incidentally, the church of Laodicea is now. So if you want to get angry with me, this is the moment. I am now preaching something that you probably won't like because it is addressed to us. I wish that I were not in the period of Laodicea. I wish I weren't in this time period that rep that's represented by lukewarmness. But I am. I'm a preacher to the church of Laodicea. I'm a member of the Laodicean church. I don't like it, but you can't get out of it. It's not a place you can leave. If I were to move, I'd say, send me to Philadelphia. Philadelphia's church was beautiful. There was nothing at all said that was negative about it. Everything was wrong with Laodicea. Nothing was wrong with Philadelphia. And so if I could move from one church to another, if I could pull myself out of time and put myself somewhere else, I'd put myself in the period of Philadelphia. In fact, if I were Jesus and I wanted to knock on doors, I'd go to Philadelphia and knock on doors. Because if you knock on doors in Philadelphia, you're liable to get a wonderful response. Somebody is liable to come to the door and say, Oh, Jesus, why did you knock? Why didn't you just let us know where you were coming? We would have had the door open already. Come on in. Come, we'll have a wonderful time together. That's Philadelphia. But Laodicea is not only lukewarm. Incidentally, what it means is that you're not cold, which means that you haven't turned away from religion, and you're not hot, I wish I had time to talk about hot. I go to preach in places where the folks are hot. And all you got to do is make an announcement and they shout. <laughs> I pastored a church like that one time. It was sheer joy. I would get up and say, we're going to have prayer meeting this Wednesday night. And they say, yes, hallelujah. I told my wife, I hope they never move us from here. I love this church. These folk are excited. I'd watch them as they were on the way to worship. And sometimes I'd have a C-class sermon ready to preach. But as I watched them going on the way to church and looked at the excitement in their eyes and the expectation in their body language, I'd go to my study and upgrade my sermon before I got to the pulpit because I knew they deserved better than I had brought. They were hot. They loved Jesus and were not ashamed to let the world know. But what the Lord says about Laodicea is, you're not hot, you're not cold, you're somewhere in the mediocre middle. You know, sometimes when you think it's to your advantage, you sound hot. Most of the time you sound cold. But because you are neither hot nor cold, and these are Jesus' words, I'll spew you out of my mouth. I don't want to be connected with you. My friends, I'm telling you, there's nothing worse than a neighborhood in Laodicea. Let me talk a little bit more about Laodicea because I've been to towns that were like this. Laodicea was poor, wretched, blind, and naked, but their perception of themselves was the opposite. They thought they were rich and increased with goods and in need of nothing. Can you imagine a worse situation? I met a man one time who had lived in a town which shall be nameless. And he said, Pastor, if you ever need anything in this city, don't ever ask the people who seem to have anything because they are only facade. I said, what do you mean? He said, you see those BMWs they drive? They can't afford them. He said, in fact, if they were to try to loan you $10 it would take their budget out of whack. He said, they've got big houses, but nothing's in them. They've got on clothes that look good, but their credit cards are overcharged to get them. And when you get in a neighborhood like that, you have found yourself in horrible territory. So when you go to the door in one of those houses, they're already mad because they can't pay their bills. You knock on the door and they say, who's that out there? Somebody selling something. And you can see the, the light change in the people. You know somebody's on the other side, you just can't see them. 
you see the blinds move just a little bit. So you know they're looking at you. You step back, try my daddy's move. It doesn't work. If you would have stepped back to the curb, they still wouldn't let you in. They can't afford anything you've got. I don't care what it is. If you're selling $10 Cadillacs, they can't afford one. So they don't want you in there. If you go to a neighborhood like that, you are in trouble. And yet, what I have to tell you today is that Jesus did not choose the church at its best time to come knocking on doors. If I had chosen, I'd have gone to Smyrna, preferably to Philadelphia, but never to Laodicea. And yet it is in our time. And let's face it, we are exactly what the Bible says we are like. We hate to admit it. We always want to say, look at all these Laodiceans around me. Wouldn't it be great if you had a mirror with you so you could look at another Laodicean? <laughs> we know that spiritually we are blind. Because if we weren't blind, we'd see ourselves as we are. Maybe the Lord gives us the luxury of not seeing everything about ourselves at one time. We might be too depressed to move forward, but we are certainly not able to see. So the Bible says when you go to Laodicea, buy that eye salve that they have. They specialize in it. Get that. Jesus says, when I come into your house, I know what your problems are. You're poor, but you don't know it. There's nobody so exasperating as somebody who's broke, but they won't admit it. You know, when you're broke, you ought to just go ahead and claim it. Embrace it. <laughs> Return a faithful tithe and see what God can do about it. But don't go around pretending that you're wealthy. It's too much of a strain on your personality. You go to places with folk and you're trying to determine who's going to pay the bill. You can barely eat. You almost get indigestion because you're trying to figure out who's going to pick up the tab. I know my wife and I have been to places like that where the menu was covered in pewter and we knew we shouldn't have been there. If there's somebody there live playing a piano, you know you're not supposed to be there. I've nudged my wife many a time and said, baby, where are we going to eat? I said, I'll tell you what, let's say we're not hungry and get some salad. I think I got enough to do the salad. So when they come to ask, what will you have? Uh, I'm not that hungry. I bought a salad. <laughs> what would you like to drink? Uh, water with lemon. It's, it's a strain to act like something you're not. In fact, I remember one time going out with a couple that was doing quite well, but I didn't know whether they would pay the bill or not, so we got salad and water with lemon, and then we got all the way to the end, and they said, oh, I forgot to tell you, we're picking up the tab. <laughs> and what I wanted to do was to rewind. Go back to the beginning so I could eat some of those wonderful things that I saw on the menu. It's a strain acting like you're what you're not. But we, Laodicea, act like what we're not. We're always around smiling, styling, and profiling. Even on Sabbath, we have our Sabbath module plugged in. We drive up with the car just washed. We get out of it, and if it's still looking fairly good, we make sure somebody sees it. <laughs> Open the door a couple of times and slam it again. <laughs> Say, oh, you've got a new car. Oh, just nothing. <laughs> Something to get from point A to point B. <laughs> and you've, you've got on your best but you don't want to repeat too many times, so maybe you ought to go here this weekend and there next weekend and there next weekend and hope nobody follows you so they'll never know you've got on the same suit. But it weighs down on you. 
because you're trying to be something that you're not. And here is what Jesus says. If you let me in your house, I know what you need. You're broke. I will give you gold that's tried in the fire. That's what I've come to, to proffer. That's what I've come to offer to you. And, and what that gold represents is the faith that works by love. Jesus, once he's in your house, once you've had the meal, he says, I want to offer you some things. I want to give you gold that's tried. Fired in the fire is how it literally reads. I want to give you a garment that you could never afford. In, in your town, almost everything you can buy is made of black wool because that's the, the prime product of your community. And so I will not give you what everybody else wears. And trust me, this is not a matter of difference in color. It's difference in the maker. Jesus says, I do not offer you clothes that are made in your town. I offer you clothes that were made on the loom of heaven. I offer you something that money can't buy. I've come to bring you something to cover your spiritual nakedness. I've come to give you eye salve. You can't see where you are. In fact, one of the reasons why Jesus is knocking on the door of your heart and mine today is because he sees in us flaws that will disqualify us to live in heaven. And he wants to correct them before God has to reject us. He presses to get into the house. He says, I'll give you gold that's fired in the fire. I'll give you garments that are not made in this town, not made on this earth, not made in this universe. I'll give you clothing that were made for you by divine power. I'll give you eye salve so that you can see. I want to make a perfect product of it. And when I leave, I don't want any of the deficiencies that you had that would disqualify you for heaven to still be here. So here's what I want. Let's talk for a while. Let's eat. I forgot to put in Swiss chard. A few of us have kind of caught on to that. He said, wasn't that good? I like that mixture with the Swiss chard mixed in. That's a wonderful meal. But now there's something I got to talk to you about. I love you, but you're poor. I love you, but you're naked. I love you, but you're blind. And I didn't come to criticize you. Let me show you what I brought. Here is a bar of gold. It's fired in the fire. It's pure. I can leave this with you. I've got a garment. I don't think you've ever seen anything like it. In fact, I brought something for the whole family. Could I show them to you? And he pulls them out. He says, how do you like that? It's your size. We already did our investigations and our research. It's just perfect for every member of the family. I've got eye salve. In fact, you can use some now. Try it. If you put it in your eyes right now in just a little tiny massage, and for the first time in your life, you'll see things as they really are. You'll notice that you're naked, but as soon as you do, you can grab the garment that I bought that is just your size. Go in your bedroom and put it on and come back out and let's see what you look like. Your whole problem has been that you didn't have anything to make you feel secure, but my gold fired in the fire will take away your poverty. And I have come to bring that for you. So I not only came to know you and let you know I love you, I not only came to be intimate with you with a meal, but I came to solve every spiritual dilemma you have. What I want to say to you today is that while you thought that Christianity was about going out and changing yourself, you thought that some book at Amazon.com would change your outlook on life, I'm not angry with reading self-help books, but nobody can change himself or herself. Nothing 
outside of you can make you what Jesus wants you to be until Jesus knocks at your door. And when he knocks, he comes in. He puts you at ease. He shares intimacy. And then he gets down to the real things that you could never provide for yourself. He brought you gold. He brought you clothes. He brought you eye salve. He brought everything you need to be ready to go to heaven. And he wants to make the change before it's too late. If you see what I'm talking about, can I hear you say amen? amen. So instead of you chasing him, folks, if, if the only people who went to heaven were people who chased Jesus, heaven would have echoes. How many of us really chase Jesus? Most of us determined to find Jesus when we got into some trouble that we could not extricate ourselves from. When nobody was there to help, when you couldn't afford the lawyer, when nobody could handle your case, when all of your family had turned against you, when your friends had put you down, when your credit union forgot who you were, when nobody cared about you, when you found yourself in a strange neighborhood with people who had nothing but acted like they had everything a hypocritical community but then Jesus broke every stereotype and came walking down your street one day and came to your door and knocked and said may I come in and I'll tell you this if you let Jesus come into your house before he leaves, it'll all be right. If you're like me, you've got a question in your mind. And the question is this. If I am poor and blind and wretched and naked, how do I buy what I need from this salesman? Isaiah 55, if you start right at verse 1, it says you can buy important things without money. But in this case, one of my favorite writers makes it extremely clear. The price that you pay for getting what Jesus has brought for sale is to turn away from everything that you thought precious to you, turn away from your own self-sufficiency. And if I were to describe Laodicea in simple terms, I would say that what we are about is self-sufficiency. Too many of us think that we're going to make it to heaven on what we've got. We're going to get better and better and better. I see people, I can read it in their eyes. They think that if they do certain things, if they dot certain I's and cross certain T's, they believe that if they think positively, if they get better from day to day, that somehow, miraculously, They'll be prepared to go to heaven based on what they have done. Self-sufficiency will never work. Jesus has the only life that can get you there. And I'm happy to tell you, I'm switching metaphors now, but try this one on for size. What Jesus is able to do is to go into your file and highlight your whole life. gets it all out there and when he has gotten your life from beginning to end with all of your righteousnesses in it he hits one button and it all goes away delete you say well preacher what does that leave me with that means I'm left with an empty file well for a moment you are but I'm happy to tell you that Jesus can leave your file and go over to his file and start copying from top to bottom. When he gets all the way down to his perfect life on earth, the whole thing, then he hits another button and you know what it is. Where is it? He copies your file, then he takes what's in his file and goes over to yours and hits the paste button and all of a sudden your life is no longer empty you have the life of Christ in place of yours 
And I promise you something, the only life that can get us into heaven is the life of Jesus Christ. He gives us the power to live. And so today I am, I am happy to be able to say that we do not have to pursue Jesus to have him in our lives. In fact, the converse is true. Jesus pursues us. He will come to your house. You say, well, all I got is an apartment. He will come to your apartment. All I got is a rented room. He'll come to your rented room. All I got is a hotel. He'll come to your extended stay hotel. He knows where you are. If you live on the streets, if you live under a cardboard box that's put on top of a grate so that heat comes up and keeps you from freezing, he knows where your box is. And he'll knock until you let him in. And by the time he leaves, you'll have gold. You'll have garments. You'll have eye salve. You'll have everything it takes to have eternal life. And all you've got to do is let him in. Join us next time for more Breath of Life with Pastor Walter L. Pearson. Life is full of questions. Sometimes we don't know which way to go or where to turn. We have doubts and fears and we wonder what it all means. But there are answers. And there is hope waiting for you in God's Word, the Bible. And there's no better way to start exploring the plans He has for you than in the Discover Bible Guides. It's the Breath of Life gift offer this week and your ticket to the heart and soul of God's Word. These easy to read and illustrated Bible studies get to what's on God's mind for you quickly and clearly. You'll be enlightened by studies such as, Is God Fair? When Jesus Comes for You, The Secret of Answered Prayer, and Bridge to a Satisfying Life. Just call our toll-free number at one eight seven seven bol offer That's one 265 6333 And ask for your copy of the Discover Bible Guides. Or you may write to Breath of Life, P.O. Box 97192, Washington, D.C., 20077. To order a CD or audio cassette copy of this Breath of Life broadcast, just call our toll-free number, 877-BOL-OFFER. That's 877-265-6333. Or you may write to Breath of Life, P.O. Box 97192, Washington, D.C., 20077. The CD or audio cassette is yours for a gift of $5 or more. If you'd like to purchase a DVD or VHS copy, just let us know. Thank you for watching and supporting Breath of Life.